In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that I use in my YouTube studio setup. I'm also gonna show you how I light myself, the background, and the equipment that I use is not very expensive. If this interests you, stay tuned. Let's start off with my main light, which is the Godox SL60W. I'm gonna switch off all of the other lights in the studio. Studio meaning my parking. So this is my key light. So if you want to build yourself a YouTube studio setup yourself, I would start with the Godox SL60W and a huge softbox. Why? because the huge softbox gives you a nice and even light. And I actually think that this look itself looks pretty good. The background is quite dark, but hey, maybe that's the look you are going for and you need only one light. And when you have this key light with a huge softbox, you don't even need to have another light from the other side, like a fill light, because this guy is so nice and strong, nice and even. So if you're on a budget and you get yourself this one, Bob's your uncle, one light is all you need. Pretty good. Let's see what happens when we keep on adding different lights. Oh, and by the way, most of the things that I am showing you today, I have reviewed in separate videos. So check the links below where you might find a video review of the specific product that interests you. So now let's put on this guy. Ooh, moody. Looks a bit weird when it's on uh, only one side. So what if we put it behind me? There you go. So you can see what a huge difference just one small pocket RGB light is doing. And the cool thing about the Waylight is that it's very strong and you can control it with your phone. If you want, for example, to change the color of the background, maybe your colors on YouTube or whatever it is are yellow, orange, red, purple, whatever. You can change it to whatever color you want to and the strength as well. I'm gonna put links below for alternatives as well, because I know in some markets you might not necessarily get the products that I'm talking about, but let's see what you can find. The next light we're gonna talk about is the hair light. Check out the difference when I switch on the hair light, where you can see that this is gonna give me a nice rim light and it's gonna separate me even more from the background. Check out the difference. So there you can see, it's separating me much more now from the background. <clears throat> now it's called a hair light, I'm wearing a cap. Let's see, oh my goodness. So if I'm not wearing the cap, you can definitely see why it's called a hair light because it gives like a nice natural shine on your hair. Let's switch on this guy as well. The other LED panel. The LED panels that I have are bicolor, meaning that you can change them from daylight color or tungsten. So right now, the light shining behind me is set on tungsten color, which is like a yellow light, because the other lights, like the key light and the hair light, they are both set on daylight, and the camera's daylight balanced as well. So if you then put a tungsten light in a daylight setup, it's gonna appear yellow. The links that I have put for these guys below the video are not the exact ones that I am using because mine are too old. I have found some lights which are even better than the ones that I have because they are also RGB lights, meaning that you can even change the color of your LED panels. I bought them because you can attach batteries to them in case you need to shoot something outdoors, which was the main reason that I bought these lights and they're also quite strong. So here we have the two LED panels. This guy up there as my hair light. And the other LED panel I'm using for my backdrop right now. To get good audio, you need to have an external microphone because the camera microphone is not close to you and the sound quality is gonna be quite bad as well. So you need to get yourself a proper video mic. In my case, I am using the Rode NTG4+. Plus. The reason I got that microphone is because it is rechargeable. It comes with a lithium battery and it lasts for 150 hours. I have connected my microphone to this Zoom H4n recorder, which I've used for years. There is a new version now of this one. And the reason why you have to use an external audio recorder is because on the camera, there is no XLR input, meaning that I cannot connect my microphone directly to the camera. If you want to have a microphone that connects directly to your camera, you could check out the Rode VideoMic Go or Pro, because the connection there is mini jack, meaning that you can connect the microphone 
microphone directly to the camera so you don't have to sync the audio and video in post-production. However, if the microphone is always on the camera, it might be a bit too far away from you. So that's something to keep in mind. You might have to be close to get a nice clear audio. If you want to do like a lot of YouTubers are doing, especially when they start out, it's actually to get yourself a lav mic. The first lav mic that I got was the Rode Smart Lab Plus. This one you just connect to your phone and you stick this guy onto your subject like that. Try to hide the cable a little bit. The audio quality is very good from this lab mic. I have used it for YouTube videos. I have used it for interviews and it has never failed me. It's very good and it's always very nice and close to the subject talking. But then again, you do need to sync the audio and video in post-production, but at least you get very good audio. So it is worth that extra step that you have to take to sync the audio and video. I prefer to use video tripods. That's because I use a heavy camera with a big lens on it. You don't need to have a video tripod, but the cool thing is that it's also making very fluid, smooth movements when you use it, compared to a photography tripod, which is not necessarily made to have fluid movements because you're taking a picture which is still. So if you need a tripod, I would suggest you to get a video tripod and one that goes high enough in case you're tall like me. My camera is a Canon 1DX Mark II, which is now kind of dated. And it's very expensive because I do use my camera for professional work. If I had to choose a new camera, which is very similar to this one, I would probably go for the Canon R5 or R6. But these cameras are very expensive. You do not need to start out with a very expensive camera. In my opinion, it's actually more important to have good lighting than a good camera, because these days, your smartphones, iPhones, Androids, whatever you have, are pretty good. In a YouTube setup, you should use a monitor, even if your camera has an LCD screen that you can flip around. My camera hasn't got one, but even if it did have an LCD screen that I could flip around, it is much better to view yourself on a bigger monitor. So I am using this Lilliput A7S, which is nice and bright, nice and big, seven inches. You can power it with a battery, which is awesome. And in this YouTube setup, I usually use the power cable so that the battery never runs out. But at least you have the option, which is very helpful if you're outdoors, for example. So. In case you don't have a room that you necessarily want to show, get yourself a backdrop. I do recommend you not using fabric background because they will get creases after a while and they're next to impossible to iron. So I prefer using paper backdrop with a tripod support system. It's easier to roll together, it's easier to store. So. If you felt that you got any good tips in this video, please give the video a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing. Stay healthy and stay safe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.